I might as well get this cover. Does not compare at all. Opens up a coffee shop. People don't know what coffee is. Hope her business does well. Ships her off to boarding school in Paris. Oh my gosh, what a tragedy. He's handsome. Cheaper than Amazon. Does not give up. Hey everyone, I have yet another huge book haul. I'll be sharing with you my experiences with them. So without further ado, let's get started. From Pingo, this is an online marketplace where you can buy used books from other independent people like me or you who would like to get rid of some of their books on their shelves. I already pre-opened and pre-cut this so that it's just easier. And she even put a thank you card on here. Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. I have read the first two so far. If you're familiar with this series, at all. You'll know that this is a four-part book series and this is the last one. This follows Stella, the social media influencer in that friend group. Also, what's important is this book looks like in pretty good quality. Next, we have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, which are two different authors put their first names together. This book is about two people going to a wedding and everyone except for those two get sick and so they are given the opportunity to go on the honeymoon instead of the bride and groom and there they have to pretend that they're newlyweds Next, we have The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. That is a long title by Grady Hendrix. So at the time, I did not know that this is a mystery thriller. I thought it was a little bit more cozy. I'm still holding out for the cozy, hopefully, but the category says mystery thriller. So this book is supposed to be about a girl who moves to a new town, joins a book club, and at that book club, they talk about mostly thrillers and mysteries. But then her actual life turns into a mystery thriller because she's attacked by an elderly neighbor and then some guy comes to save her, but then she grows suspicious of that guy because of the other stuff that's happening in town. So <laughs> I'm hoping it's it's an okay thriller naturally i guess because of that story it has a subplot of romance and hopefully she's wrong about her suspicions about the guy but yeah the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires oh my god is he supposed to be a vampire and not like a regular is this like a kind of a sci-fi We'll see. And I think in general, all your experiences with Pango will be different because you'll probably be buying from different sellers because there's thousands and thousands. But for the most part, I think they all try to send it pretty quickly and in good condition and they're very transparent about the condition of the book. So I'm happy with my purchase and I would buy from this seller again. The only thing about Pango is, is because people are so used to Amazon and not having to pay for delivery fees, Pango, even though they might sell for a little less, the delivery fee will be up up there like seven ten dollars and more if you buy more so next we shall do should we do blackwells yeah blackwells is a store based in the uk powerless by lauren roberts i am so late in reading this book but better late than never right i <laughs> it was actually cheaper on blackwells than amazon and i was willing to wait normally this aesthetic is not really my style but i think this is such a pretty cover Look at all the chapters. It has these flowers. You can see from here that the flowers are a consistent reappearing thing every time the chapter starts. So basically, people in this world get sick and then if they recover from that sickness, they somehow get some kind of magical power of some sort. If not, they die. And so if you're lucky enough to both get sick and then recover from it, thus gaining the power, then you join this elite sort of group. But if you're not, you're called the Ordinaries. And I think one day the king orders that the ordinary should be kind of gone. And so she is just trying to survive in this world. This, now we know, is part of a trilogy. It looks like Reckless, the second book of this trilogy, will be coming out in July 2nd, 2024. And I'm just excited to read this because I've heard so much hype about this book. And I just feel like the last person on earth in the book community to read this book. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited. Next, do, 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 drum roll, please. <gasps> Ariadne. Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. Look at this cover. It is the most stunning cover ever. It has the gold foiling on the book cover and on the back as well. Okay, not just that's a loud car. Oh, it's FedEx. But I'm waiting for UPS for my package. So it's not for me they're gone <laughs> so back to the book obviously i didn't buy this just because the cover is pretty i had to make sure that the story was really good too so this is a greek mythology retelling of ariadne and ariadne's brother is a monster and a prince from a different kingdom comes to kill her monster brother and she has to decide whether or not she's gonna help him if she does how is she supposed to live with her family and just drama 
I have not heard any bad reviews, so I'm just really looking forward to it. And I'm sure the book reading really experience is going to be so good because the book is so pretty. Unfortunately, the pages are nothing special. So when I saw booktubers talk about this book, they were all pretty much holding this cover. And so I was curious, looked on Amazon and the US cover does not compare at all. Because this cover is so pretty, that US cover just doesn't cut it. I could not. Next, <gasps> Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I have heard so many good things about this book. Everyone loves this book. It's not new, but I feel like it's now starting to really, really gain traction because everyone's talking about it now. So Half a Soul is a historical and romance fiction. Our female main character was basically cursed by a fairy, which causes her to have no sense of fear or embarrassment, thus her half of a soul. So she basically just does not give a f Of course, that would not help her in creating relationships, but she meets a guy who may possibly be okay with that. This is actually part of a trilogy, the Regency Fairy Tales, and all three of them are out. If I like this book, then I'll be reading the rest of the books, but I'm sure I'll like this book. Next, we will open the bigger Blackwell's package. Okay. Ooh. <gasps> Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Ah, I bought the UK version. <laughs> I prefer this one compared to the green thing on the other cover of the US version. And also the other one looked pretty shiny and this one's matte. So I just prefer the matte covers of books in general. So this book is supposed to fall under the category of humorous, fantasy, and romance. And this is also part of a duology. Our main character opens up a coffee shop in a place where people don't really know what coffee is. I hope her business does well. <laughs> How are you supposed to sell that? Next. Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I have not read the Caraval trilogy. I will before I read this book, but I just wanted to have this in my possession first. This feels so nice, it's so pretty. Yes, I got the paperback version. My gosh, the attention to detail, the gold foiling on the little specks in the armor. I mean, this book, definitely the UK cover is much prettier than the US version. Do they want us to spend more money towards the UK GDP? Why? So I think the premise of this story is also really cute in that the female main character is in love with a guy who is supposed to be getting married. She asks a prince to help stop that wedding and in return he wants three kisses that he can ask for from her at any time. That sounds so cute, no? And then of course I bought the second book. The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is the second book in the trilogy. I did not buy the third book. I am waiting for the paperback version to match these two. I won't read the excerpt from this one just because I don't want to spoil anything about this one. They're so cute. Next we have... Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake. I got this from Blackwell's because it was actually cheaper than Amazon, so why not? Also, I don't think the US version has this little like honeycomb looking thing with the gold foil on there. Obviously, everyone has nothing but good to say about this book. So you basically know that this is a love story, but what I didn't know is that it's a love story between a doctor and a counterfeit artist. The doctor being the guy, the counterfeit artist being the girl. Also, it falls in the category of romantic fantasy and literary fiction. Okay, this next one. I was really bad, but I don't care. I love it. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Do you see the version that I have? It is hard cover. It is not, there's no book dust, there, there is no dust jacket on here. It's fully just this hard cover version. It is so pretty. Look at this gold foiling on there. So beautiful. I really could not resist. If you can tell the, like, the texture of it, it's like actually hardcover, like the stuff that they used to make back in the day. This is what it looks like when you first open to the first page. And what I'm grateful for is that the print is not super tiny. It is like a good size where it won't hurt my eyes if I'm reading this for several hours straight. Ooh, do you hear that? It's like I have never been opened before kind of sound. <laughs> this is basically the retelling of the Iliad by Homer and it's supposed to be a love story. I heard it makes people cry sometimes. I'm crying because this is so cute. And actually I didn't mind the US version of the cover but I saw this hardcover like true to yesteryears of bookmaking cover and I had to get this one. I was bad again and bought 
Seriously by Madeline Miller in this same type of hardcover look at this Have you seen this? I actually have not seen this cover or version anywhere. I saw this on Blackwell's. My goodness It was so pretty. I was thinking I'm gonna get this might as well get this like look at how cute they are together Also this one I did not mind the US version of the cover But this hardcover had me calling my name look at the pretty birdcage Look at the flowers and of course Cersei also had really great reviews as well look at the inside It is quite heavy though I will say so this is another Greek mythology retelling Cersei our female main character can basically transform people into monsters and vicious animals which no one really appreciates so people are afraid of her and maybe start coming for her because they're afraid of her powers good luck girl <laughs> So that is my entire order from Blackwells. I've had so far great experiences with them every time I've ordered from them. They package their books really well. They actually come pretty fast, especially considering that they are all coming from the UK. So I'm very happy with them. The book conditions are actually really nice. And they just make everything so easy because you don't have to worry about the VAT and the different taxes that you might have to think about when you're ordering from overseas. And then they have obviously really great covers like this one. Okay, shall we tackle Amazon next? Because this pile is calling to me. <laughs> Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. This is part of a duology. What I didn't know was that this is a duology that comes after a trilogy called The Kiss of Deception, but you don't need to read Kiss of Deception to understand this one. However, it does help. But this is a Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi. <laughs> YA. <laughs> This is a young adult fantasy and this is very hyped up. Even in the comment section, Mooney, thank you for the recommendation. I did purchase this book and very excited to read it. This is supposed to be an enemies to lovers romance, but also forced proximity romance. Ooh, we will tackle this one. <gasps> this is, <laughs> okay, Atlas 6 by Olivia Blake. You can see that I have it in this cover. I got this new, I didn't get this used. I don't like the new cover, so I bought it in this cover. <sighs> Again with the matte. I love the matte covers. Oh wow, he's handsome. I wasn't expecting drawings. Another handsome man, wow. Something to help you with your imagination. I thought this was supposed to be a hard find, but it's actually on Amazon. And I'll leave the link down below from where I got it. But it was about $20, 22 maybe. Not terribly priced. And this is the first book in the trilogy. From what I understand, every decade, six magicians are chosen to fight each other. Basically, the winner gets some prestigious position. But you guys all know this is a really popular book, so have very high expectations. This is the back of the book. I am very much enjoying myself right now. Next. Ooh, Twisted Hate by Anna Huang. Okay, so this is book three in the Twisted series. This is the book following the feisty red-headed Jules in the friend group, and she gets her love story, which I think is with the main character's brother of the first book. Next, I put a thick book in here. <laughs> the final offer. Since my last haul, I have read the second book, Turns and Conditions. Did not like that book even more than the first one. I just want to finish this series, in all honesty. I but this follows Cal, the last of the three brothers in the Dreamland Billionaire series. To earn his inheritance, his grandfather stipulates that he needs to spend a summer in one of their vacation homes. In that vacation home, there is a childhood friend and she lives there and also claims to own part of that home. Which obviously makes things complicated, so forced proximity romance? Please just be better than the second one. I, oddly enough, like the first one better than the second one. Next! Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I bought this cover not because I like the dust jacket, but because I like the hard cover here. I plan to have this on my bookcase pointing out like this and not like this because this is so cute. So I'm just gonna display it like this and keep the dust jacket safe somewhere behind or somewhere else. Just really, really like this cover. So Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross is basically a young adult fantasy book. This follows our female main character who is struggling to make ends meet and her family is kind of falling apart. And her brother is one of the soldiers in war and she tries to send her brother notes, but for some reason it magically gets redirected to one of her rivals. And he somehow gets those letters, responds, and when she receives them, she doesn't know who they're from. It's supposed to be a romantic story about the guy who keeps writing back letters to her. Next. The Story Life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. Where have you heard that name before? Duh. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Did I say three tomorrows? 
That book is thick. This book came before that book, but I still expected it to be thick as that book, but it's not less than 300 pages. This is supposed to be a literary fiction, and I think it has some level of suspense and thriller into it. So this book is about AJ Fickery, who owns kind of a failing bookshop, but then he gets a package that will change the rest of his life. But I don't know what that package is or how it would change the rest of his life, so <laughs> I'll find out. Next. Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. It is a love story between our female main character who is a pediatrics resident and also engaged to be married. But she runs into her old love, Elliot, and he basically declares his love for her, but she's already engaged. So she has to decide between if she's gonna be with the guy that she's engaged to, who she doesn't love, and the guy she's not engaged to, but really loves. I hope this book doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. Next. Ooh, I was bad with this one too. <laughs> this is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I bought the pretty cover version. This is my first sprayed edge. It's pretty, but to be honest, I'm not like, oh, I need this sprayed edge. I mainly more care about the covers and the spines. But this is also a hardcover without a dust jacket. It's just printed onto the cover of the actual book. And also, isn't it really pretty with the gold foiling too? This is what the inside looks like, the rest of it. And the other regular normal cover is, is okay, but it's nothing compared to this one. This one is so beautiful. So in this book, Anna's dad ships her off to boarding school in Paris. Oh my gosh, what a tragedy. How will she survive? <laughs> But I'm, I'm, yeah. When she goes to Paris, she meets a guy who she's really into. But I think he also has a relationship with somebody else. So again, I hope this book does not make me uncomfortable. Next book. Okay. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This is a modern classic and it is basically about a woman going through mental health issues and societal pressures like a lot of women do in today's society. This is my first Sylvia Plath book, but I'm sure I'll be reading more. Excited to read this modern classic. This next one is not a classic, but possibly a classic in my heart because it's from Allie Hazelwood. Check and Mate. I am so beyond excited to read this book. I did play chess when I was younger. And you know when you're a child, even now, Friday the 13th is bad luck. And on Friday the 13th, many years ago, when I was a child, I won against my friend and he played chess a lot too. But since I won, I was like, oh, I guess Friday the 13th isn't really bad luck for me. <laughs> Anyways, since then I have stopped playing chess, but I still have a special place for it in my heart and so will this book. She's supposed to be a chess prodigy and I think he's really good at chess too. And I'm sure there's some kind of rivals because they're both really good at chess and both want to be number one. A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This cover is so stunning, no? Why did they have to make it shiny? I don't like the shiny covers. I really, really wish it was matte. I feel like it would make it look way more elegant. But I still do like the illustration. It is pretty. This looks so fantastical and wonderful. A Study in Drowning, that is an incredible title. This one came out fairly recently. It came out last year in September of 2023 and since then has gotten great reviews. So in this book, the female main character really likes this one book and the author of that book recently passed away and the family of that author opens up a contest for someone to redesign his estate. So she wins, goes there, and it's not really what she was expecting. And then of course, there's another guy who Who's a literary scholar who is there for the sole purpose of trying to expose this late author as a fraud, thereby making this a partly rivals to lovers romance in this historical fantasy book. Next! <laughs> I am expanding my genres here. I got Hooked by Emily McIntyre. If you're on the dark side of book talk, this is where you'll find this book. <laughs> This is the first book in the five-part Never After series. And all of the books in this series is a retelling of a childhood story, but in a dark romantic fantasy kind of way. This book is a dark romantic retelling of Peter Pan, but where Wendy is in love with Captain Hook. Dun dun dun! <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> On Book Talk though, this is pretty popular. What was even more popular though was Scarred by also Emily McIntyre. This one is a dark romantic Lion King retelling in the second book of the Never After series. Son, who is supposed to ascend the throne after his father's death, is said to marry a girl who is trying to end that whole king line. And then his brother is also trying to go for the throne as well, but also falls for that same girl. This seems to be everyone's favorite out of the whole series. Next, Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. I have this book finally because the other cover with the people on it was so ugly, I just refused to buy it. 
But now they came out with this very discreet cover. This is the first book in the Boys of Thomas series. Everyone really, really loves this book. I want to know why this book is binding 13. What's the significance with 13? No one tell me. So this series is a young adult romance, but this book in particular looks like it's about a guy who is a hotshot rugby player and a girl who is kind of shy and bullied. And they somehow create this friendship that turns into instant chemistry. Apparently it's making everyone's heart flutter. So I'm waiting for my caterpillar heart to become a butterfly. Heavy lift with care. Emily Wilde, Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I was super nervous that this book was gonna come with those stickers that brags about it being number one on the bestseller because that's what the picture showed. But thankfully, it doesn't have any sticker in sight, so we're good. So this is another book that has the cover actually printed onto the hardcover of the book and it doesn't have a separate dust jacket. So the female main character in this book, Emily Wilde, is a genius scholar who is studying fairies and their world. And she somehow comes across this mystery and is trying to uncover the secret of that mystery and I don't know what the mystery is but we'll find out. And because I bought that book, I was like I'm not gonna risk having the second book be with the sticker. So I bought it before they could say that this is some kind of best top selling whatever. So this is Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett. So the first one she's just studying fairies and creating an encyclopedia of the fairies. The second one it looks like she's making a map of that fairy realm. I guess there's like an infiltration within the story and so she's forced to escape but because she's making a map I think she knows her way around and how to escape. I'm just so ready for this fairy tale. Next one, we have A Million Junes by Emily Henry. Yes, the Emily Henry. This is her YA novel, which was printed before she came out with her regular romance novels. And this also got really great reviews. This is apparently a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but in a fantastical form. That sounds interesting. Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. So in this, most of humanity is plugged into this virtual world, kind of like how what Facebook was trying to do. They all play in this world, but then one day the creator of this virtual world passes away and he leaves behind some kind of game for people to play so that whoever wins that game is able to get all of his entire fortune. So the player in this book is trying to win that game and all of that money and I heard it was a really great book. We have the Infernal Devices series. Look at the spines of this. This is such beautiful artwork. I have never seen spines like this. I think it came out after Mortal Instruments, but it's supposed to be a precursor to Mortal Instruments. So what Cassandra Clare has said previously is that you should read the first three books of Mortal Instruments, then read these three, then continue on with the Mortal Instruments series. However, you're fine just reading these three first and then the rest of the Mortal Instruments. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I guess this is in the Shadow Hunters world and there are three books in the Infernal Devices series. The first one being Clockwork Angel. I think the story starts off with a girl who is trying to find her brother. So in order to do that, she goes to London, but this is during Queen Victoria's reign. So it's kind of like in the very yesteryears. When she gets there, she learns that Shadow Hunters are trying to rid society of the demons and the bad stuff. But then she realizes that she actually has powers herself. So the shadow hunters enlist her to join them in fighting off the demons and in exchange they'll help her find her brother. The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. It's not a fantasy, but it looks like these kids have some kind of elevated ability that will help the FBI in their case solving. The first one, I think she's a 17 year old kid who has a natural talent for detecting lies. So that will obviously help the FBI in their case solving. That sounds so cool, right? That is all of the Amazon books. I am still waiting for my UPS package to arrive. It is only a few hours later, but our final package has arrived from book outlet. So what I found out was when they give you the email saying that your package has shipped and there's that button where it says track my package, you click on that but it takes you to some website called like Wismo or something and in Wismo it helps you track that package in Canada but you don't know where it is in your country if you're not from Canada. So in the US it looks like they use UPS so if it looks like your package has been stuck in Toronto, Canada for a long time, copy and paste that tracking number into the UPS tracking website and that's how you wear your packages in America, if you're from America. The protective covering is impressive. So this is how Book Outlet's package looks like. I think it's very well packaged and pretty well protected. Taylor Jenkins read One True Loves. It has that sticker on there. Please be a clean takeoff. 
Okay, I'll make it cleaner later. Book Outlet is known for having these dots here, and that's just indicative of this book being overprinted, but it doesn't mean that it's used. This follows our female main character who is married to a guy who gets into a crash and then disappears and then therefore is assumed to have passed away. She moves on with her life, finds a new man, is engaged to be married, but then lo and behold, that first husband is actually alive, and now she has to choose between the two. Obviously, it's a difficult situation, and I'm told that from the reader's perspective, it's difficult to prefer one guy over the other. I'm just, I'm curious who she chooses. Next, we have The Final Gambit. This is book three in the Inheritance Games trilogy. I will be purchasing the first book and the second book. Don't worry, I'm not gonna read this first. But I will be reading the Natural series first and then the Inheritance Game series. So in this trilogy, a billionaire passes away and in his will gives the opportunity to our female main character to inherit that billions of dollars. But with the caveat that she has to move into the house of his actual blood-related grandsons. Of course, they're not gonna like that. Who the heck is she and where does she come from? She doesn't even go here. That's what makes it fun apparently. <laughs> This is How You Lose a Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. This is a time travel sci-fi romance and apparently it's supposed to be rivals who fall in love, so enemies to lovers? Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is a smarty pants enemies to lovers because they both excel in school. This is a young adult romance and it's dual point of view. This also has the dot. So if you don't mind the dot, you should purchase from Book Outlet because it's so much cheaper compared to other places. But of course, they only have a select books. The Hours by Michael Cunningham. This is two books in one. Oh, it's kind of damaged here. Darn it. This one side is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, which is a classic. And then the other side is Michael Cunningham's retelling of Mrs. Dalloway, but he puts it as The Hours. So as you go through the book, it's upright but then it turns into the other book because you have to flip it around and then read the actual other book from this side. I really wanted Mrs. Dalloway and I thought this was like the prettiest cover for Mrs. Dalloway, but I know he won some sort of prestigious prize for the hours. The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. This is a romance book, but also says that it has humorous parts to it. So our female main character somehow tests her DNA into this DNA-based soulmate matching company. And it turns out that she is a 98% match with the owner of that company. But she doesn't believe it because she already knows the guy and she doesn't like him very much. So he makes a proposition to her. He will pay her to pretend to date him so that his company looks good and it looks like it works. I wonder what happens. Next we have The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. Our female main character, she is a beloved romance novelist, but she realizes she doesn't really know much about love herself in reality. And then the male main character is a filmmaker whose boss tells him to create a reality TV show. So he's trying to make this reality TV show with love as the main topic. She's on the show and he's a producer. So I'm assuming that he kind of starts to get jealous. So that is all for the books. I have over 40 books that I showed you today. Let me know if there are other videos you'd like me to film. I'd be interested and open. And I hope you have a fantastic time reading. <laughs> Bye!